Ready? Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, we're excited to share our report, Advancing Gender Equity Conversations with Movement Leaders. In 2017, we launched the Gender Diversity Mapping Project in partnership with Rosie, who is here today. Very exciting. Um, to gather feedback from Wikimedians at the forefront of gender equity efforts in the Wikimedia movement. Before we dive in, we're going to talk a little bit about the title. So historically, we have talked about this issue in the Wikimedia movement um, basically uh, as closing the gender gap, which simply meant increasing the content about women on Wikipedia and increasing the number of women contributors. But the individuals that we interviewed in this project, what they're doing really goes beyond this and is more closely aligned with advancing gender equity. So advan advancing gender equity means that we seek fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement for all genders. Because some genders have been historically underserved and underrepresented, equity requires that we identify and eliminate barriers that have prevented their full participation in society. So conversations with movement leaders. Rosie embarked on a diverse set of fascinating conversations with 65 movement leaders from 29 countries who speak 26 different languages. <clears throat> While she asked the same basic set of questions from all of them, these were really conversations and she listened to their stories. We want to be clear that we did not set up this project as an academic research project and with the aim of having statistically significant data as the main outcome. This means that sometimes the ideas presented here are more provocative than exhaustive. We wanted to share this quote from Lindsay who helped us with the qualitative analysis. She said, the focus of qualitative research is on participants' perceptions and experiences and the way that they make sense of their lives. So that's what we're sharing with you today, perceptions of experiences of gender equity leaders in our movement. We'll cover the motivations and the progress that they've made in their work, as well as the best practices and also the main barriers in achieving gender equity in the movement. Marty and Rosie will share quotes directly from the interviews to let you hear their voices more clearly. Um, this map shows the spread of geographic um, diversity that the interviewees came from. The larger the bubble, the greater the number of interviewees. You can see that um, well, what we used was a snowball sampling method, which basically means you ask the people you know, and then they ask the people that they know to be part of the project. So we didn't get as widespread a group as we would have hoped. Um, for example, we know that there are a lot of gender diversity leaders working in Latin America, but you can see we only had a few interviewees from there. So the, the representation is not as ideal as we would have liked. And in the second map, we show language diversity. So you can see um, the different languages represented. For example, in India, we had at least five different languages um, from, the, from, the, from India. Um, we wanted to pause here before we dove into the report and ask you a couple of questions. Um, and we're going to use a Mentimeter poll, which is you can use your computers or your um, phones to log in. and respond to the questions. So we wanted to know why you are here today and why is it important to you to hear this perspective of gender equity leaders. So let me switch to this. So basically you can go to this um, website and use the code and answer the question and then we'll have um, actually how do we show the
and my life. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna read some of the quotes that are coming up. To learn about obstacles to knowledge equity. What to hear more about progress on the gender gap and current thinking. I want to learn what community members think of the findings and the report. To support the work that's being done and to learn how others perceive it. It's important to me as I'm a gender equity leader. I'm curious to hear about what can be learned about this topic across countries, cultures, languages. As a WMF staff member siloed in a random department, this is my only chance yes. <laughs> to hear from community leaders. I care to hear from gender equity leaders so that their opinions can help guide my work, understanding. Sorry, let me try and pause this. <laughs> the problems and how to fix. I see that WMF and the projects have a long way to go before getting to gender equity, not just gender at issue. I'd like to know what people are working on and where they are blocked or where the buck is being passed. No, not just to learn, but to map the gaps and challenges we still need to face. Okay, great, we're gonna stop here with that question. I think that some of these we will address in the presentation, some we might address in Q&A, and the others we'll have to dig deeper into a little bit later. So I'm gonna get into what our goal was with this project. Um, we wanted to identify active movement leaders and document what they've learned from their work, and we had three main goals in mind. First was to strengthen the network of learning and sharing between leaders in the movement who are working um, to advocate for gender equity. We also wanted to better inform the larger Wikimedia community about the scope of these efforts as well as the barriers. And Rosie has been presenting on this report over the last year, Wikimania, Wikiconference North America. It'll be presented um, at the upcoming um, CEE meeting in Ukraine as well and to inspire new initiatives and partnerships, especially with organizations outside of the movement who are aligned with this work. And we also knew that our new strategic direction was on the horizon, and we wanted a baseline of understanding of the work that was being done so we can help focus efforts towards greater knowledge equity in the future. So to start, what became very clear with these conversations is that gender is subject to multiple and contradictory definitions across different cultural contexts. And even among Wikimedia's gender equity leaders, there is no established consensus about a common vocabulary for talking about gender. It's become apparent with this project that gender is so culturally informed and expressed. Such different understandings of what gender is in different regions, countries, cultures, Trying to communicate around gender is very difficult. I didn't really understand the entire concept of transgender until I started working with Wikimedians. I've learned a lot from working with people who identify in a different way than I do, and it's helped me outside of Wiki, too. So even though the definitions and how they perceive gender can be quite different, um, they all share a value in promoting equity around gender. As they speak to, or as they seek to expand the Wikimedia movement's capacity to understand and support gender equity, what is the vision that drives their efforts? As it turns out, they have many different visions, and they are motivated by a variety of ideas around the future that they are trying to create. These are just some of the motivations that we're going to read. Consciousness raising around free knowledge. I want to dispel the myth that gender-focused programs are garbage. It's also about women finding each other and their friendships. 
everything I do on Wiki, it's for my future, my country, my people, my state. Expanding the notion of what a participant is, celebrating everyone's contributions, not creating a hierarchy of participation. Creating stories of the missing, women and queer, other genders and marginalized communities. Thank you. So what are they doing? Gender equity leaders across the movement are working on lots of projects and have for many years. These are pictures of just a few of them. They include partnering with the United Nations in Egypt, running online campaigns to write women's biographies on the English Wikipedia, running offline edit-a-thons in Mexico, creating safe spaces for marginalized genders, partnering with feminist organizations in India, and running Wiki Loves Women across Africa. Um, in the actual report, we have um, more project examples as well as links to all of those project pages. <clears throat> so what is working? Um, after running many of these successful projects for a number of years, there is a consensus around what strategies are, oh wait, I just skipped a part, hold on. <laughs> um, I guess in my notes I left out this part. So we do know that a lot of the projects that we're doing um, and supporting are successful. Um, the ways that we measure success um, is very different across content and par participation, as well as harder to measure change, such as working on community health or addressing systemic bias issues. In terms of content, it's very easy to measure change, right, in terms of articles. We can see with Wiki Women in Red or in the Barakop region, they did a women you, can, um, women you Have Never Met campaign in one month. They created over 5,000 articles that have been viewed over 25 million times. So those numbers are very impactful and easy to measure. Participation is much harder as most people don't disclose their gender on Wikipedia and seek to remain anonymous as that creates safety for them. But we can look at um, those that do disclose their gender over time, are those numbers going up? And you can use a Sparkle query to look at um, if those numbers are rising on the major Wikipedias, and they are. What we can't measure, though, is community health and more of the transformational aspects of change. And that's something that a lot of the interviewees brought up as something that our community really needs to think more closely about. So this, this person said, the ways we measure how success looks like is transactional content, people, and communities. But then there's a deeper layer, the transformational. And I think that this is an area where we still struggle. So what is working? After running a lot of these successful projects, there's a consensus around what strategies are really working in our communities. Doesn't mean that these are the only strategies, and there's a lot of room for creativity as well. So the number one thing is off-wiki events. This is not very surprising, especially to those of us on the community resources team where we fund a lot of off-wiki events. Um, these responses were a reminder of the power it, that an off-wiki engagement and interaction can be in building community. Later in the report, you'll see that a lot of gender equities feel very siloed in their work and their communities, and they find it incredibly supportive to meet with others that they're aligned with in person. Providing physical space where people can discuss their issues, ask for help, learn together, instead of bumping into things alone while writing in their houses. It increases the collective nature, belonging to a community. That is pretty powerful. And this is a picture from Wiki Women Camp from last year in Mexico City, which was only the second, second or third? Second. Second time we have um, organized that, and it was a very powerful experience for many people. Number two is partnerships, also not super surprising. Partnerships are a powerful way to align Wikimedians with people that are experts in the field about gender equity. They emphasize that partnerships led to more and better quality con content that is relevant to the local communities it is about. Better um, accessibility to sources, more structured support systems, more expansive and inclusive discussions, increased sense of solidarity, especially for those Wikimedians who feel very um, isolated in their Wikimedian community, and greater visibility for their project. Um, this is a group whose knowledge many of you know. They were working in Serbia, I think it was. Oh, Bosnia, sorry. Um, 
They speak a lot about identifying the time it takes to identify a good partnership, looking at aligning around values, developing trust, sharing power, and um, that it takes a lot of time and investment, but it's obviously well worth the effort. Centering marginalized communities and intersectional knowledge, working with communities to think about sources that really represent the knowledge of those communities. Uh, the next best practice was filling gaps and tracking progress. So contributors want to know that what they're doing is making a difference. And so tracking progress in terms of filling gaps is very satisfying. Um, lists like Women in Red, tracking tools like the Program and Events Dashboard, participant surveys, all of these motivate uh, program leaders and participants. What has been very su successful for us is choosing themes. Everyone was very interested in learning about women scientists in India. Learning about different women and creating the content motivates them. Tracking gender participation enables them to understand what they, the program leaders, do, where they put their resources, who's invited, and who feels invited. So the next best practice was inclusion practices. Because of the barriers to equity, effective inclusion of mar marginalized groups requires creating safe spaces in which only those members identified with the group may participate. These safe spaces allow members to learn and edit together in a supportive environment. Fully 80% of the interviewees said that their projects are only open to people with gender identities that are marginalized on Wikimedia projects. This was probably the highest consensus out of all the questions in terms of something statistically significant. Um, and additionally, many gender diversity, diversity leaders, advancing equity is an intersectional effort that extends beyond gender. And there was a widely shared value for centering perspectives that are historically marginalized and working toward more equitable representation beyond gender on Wikimedia. And then the last one was communicating communications. So when we asked about communication strategies, 78% of interviewees said that they do not communicate on Wiki, and that, or they communicate off Wiki on Facebook, email, WhatsApp, Snapchat, et cetera. And only 2% communicate on Wiki. <laughs> um, tells you what kind of toxic environment there is on the projects. And the overwhelming practice of communicating off wiki raises questions both of how to increase off wiki engagement, but also about the barriers and potential solutions for making on wiki channels more supportive and safe. All right, so now we've come to the main barriers section. The number one barrier expressed was bias in policies. 20% of interviewees identified bias and policies on Wikimedia projects as the most challenging obstacle that they face. And within that, the notability policy was the most challenging, followed by category policies as well as reliable sources. There are a number of efforts underway on different language Wikipedias to discuss how to address this, but obviously changing policy is a pretty complicated issue. You can read more about this issue on the Wikimedia Foundation blog. Um, last week, we just published a post regarding um, Donna Strickland, who recently won the Nobel Prize, and the whole controversy around why did she not have an article before she won um, due to the lack of reliable sources. These are some of the quotes about uh, policies that we gathered. The issue of citations. Our history is oral, not digital, not Western, not peer-reviewed journals format. Male defined. That's the standard for everything. If you try to break that, you're seen as trying to break a universal standard rather than a real standard. So interviewees offered a lot of critical feedback about the way that these policies reinforce the biases of the larger culture within Wikimedia projects. And social groups subject to negative bias are not permitted full and accurate representation in encyclopedic articles. Other interviewees offered an intersectional perspective about the challenging impact these policies have on equitable representation of knowledge. 
Their comments spoke to the way negative bias impacts not only marginalized genders, but also race, geographic origin, and other forms of identity subject to discrimination. These policies can prove especially challenging for new editors because they must wrestle not only with the unfamiliarity with a new policy, but also with its tendency to hold up, imp uphold implicit bias against their content areas. There is a dogmatic view on neutrality, notability, and reliability. Wikimedia's organizing policies are principles of the, of the minority of the world, white men sitting in North America and Europe. So whenever anyone challenges these, those organizing principles are thrown back as weapons of mass oppression. Um, the next one was lack of awareness of gender bias. 18% um, of interviewees said that lack of awareness within the community was the most challenging obstacle that they faced. And their stories were not about a lack of exposure or like a basic lack of exposure to gender equity projects, but instead they, communi they communicated a much more complex experience of systemic bias in which a perspective is privileged as normal while alternative perspectives are dismissed, minis minimized, or outright denied. When asked if editors are generally welcome to bring up issues of systemic bias on Wiki, 37% said no. Though there's a facade of listening to voices in the community, we don't honor our women contributors, the marginalized community. We cave into misogyny without recognizing it. I would share that most of what I have experienced is that editors might think what they are doing is normal, but these norms have to be challenged. And then the last barrier probably is no surprise for community health, which encompasses a few different areas. I've had porn emails sent to me. Aggression when discussing biographies of women. I had an aggressive person who said he would phone my employer. It was quite frightening. I don't communicate on Wiki about this stuff. It's a honeypot for trolls. Hence the honey on the slide. Um, so beyond harassment, there's also a lack of support for gender equity work. Though there's very variations across contexts, Definitely, a ma majority of interviewees describe a lack of adequate support for their work. Um, and many w interviewees communicate a, a sense of isolation within their Wikimedia community. When you contacted me, I was so glad. It made me realize how low a priority gender diversity was in my community. Though I'm hopeless in my community that there will be change, Maybe this will influence one person somewhere to contribute on this subject. We have to deal with pushback from our community. Women don't want to expose themselves on issues such as this. And then in terms of um, community health, the last issue that was brought up was a lack of diversity in leadership. Um, when we asked about their perception of, of gender diversity and leadership roles, 78% said that leadership in the Wikimedia movement is unbalanced in its representative representation of genders. Governance is broadly defined to include affiliate leadership, on wiki admins, and other common forms of community leadership. And I was, I was, as I was watching Rosie's presentation at Wikimania, I know that someone said, well, actually, on English Wikipedia, there are more women admins um, compared to the number of women editors, which may be true on English Wikipedia, but again, we have surveyed people from um, 26 different language Wikipedia, so this was the overwhelming consensus. All right, so now we've covered the main motivations and challenges faced by gender equity leaders in our movement. The report on Meta goes into a lot more detail, and there's a lot about the work that we can celebrate. However, it also delivers a, quite a troubling message about the ways that Wikimedia projects and communities are deeply shaped by structural bias and social inequity, and that privilege, it privileges some groups over others. So the Wikimedia movement invites the world to imagine 
a world in which everyone can share freely in the sum of knowledge. And if that's truly our commitment, then this report delivers a sobering call to Wikimedians to do more to prioritize the, knowledges, the knowledge and communities of those that have been left out by structures of power and privilege. Our strategic focus on knowledge equity signals that we are collectively turning toward this challenge with new focus. And we really hope that this report can inspire other Wikimedians um, and give them some concrete insight into where to apply their efforts. So now we're going to turn the conversation back to you. We have the Mentimeter poll again. And here's the first set of questions. Is there anything that surprised you in this report? Is there anything that sounded really familiar to you? And what is to you the most important finding? So we'll do each of these one by one. So first, is there anything that surprised you? You can use the same website and the same code. Um, one edit can make a difference. Here are some of the answers that are coming up about, is there anything that surprised you in this report? Nothing was surprising. Nope. <laughs> the amount of off-wiki communication was surprising to see in numbers, but it makes sense given the on-wiki environment. Surprised the lack of diversity in leadership with 78% unbalanced to men have some prominent women leaders. Catherine Mayer, Victoria Coleman, Nicole Eber, et cetera. The dramatic percentage of off-wiki communication tools. The authenticity, the authenticity in the voices was so strong. Truly, their perception was clear. The fact that people can learn about gender when they engage in fixing the gender gap on Wikipedia. No, everything's still the same. It was surprising to me that someone said that gender equity programs are usually garbage. I wonder who's putting the, uh, those programs and why they are that way. I'm extremely happy to see people speaking up so plainly about the standards of notability. Sorry, it's really hard to control this thing. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> This is the first this, time we're using This is it. our first time, yeah, using Mentimeter. Again, I'm extremely happy to see people speaking up so plainly about the standards of notability stemming from white men's roles in North America and Europe. This is something that must be understood. I had no hope of it. I think this really reflects also um, Marty and Rosie and I's um, assessment after we did these interviews, that there wasn't a lot that was super surprising in terms of best practices and barriers. But what was surprising was the consistency across geographic regions, that everyone was experiencing a very similar thing. But, and then also, on the flip side, that some people had very, very strong um, community around gender diversity efforts, say on the English Wikipedia. But then there were people that we spoke to in Central Europe and Eastern Europe who maybe were the sole person on their language Wikipedia that cared about gender, and that it was very difficult and very isolating for them to work on these projects. And so that's where we hope that, that reports like this and sharing this information more will help those people connect to others that are doing similar work in their area. I think also, Something that um, is maybe obvious, but was 
made even more clear when we were in Mexico City was the, the difference in understanding of gender and gender concepts and how difficult it made that, that lack of a shared understanding and a shared language to do some of the work and have some of the discussions that we needed to have to push this issue forward. And in the report, we do have a tab where um, Marty and I put together definitions around the language that we were using just in the report. It doesn't mean that that is the shared understanding around the movement, but that was the shared understanding that we had when we actually wrote um, the report. Is there anything else? Oh. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Oh. Well, let's try and find it. Oh, there we go. Wondering a lot about how we make these stories and rhetoric accessible to audience of not activists. Yeah, that's a great question. All right, the next question was, what sounds really familiar? So for a lot of people, it sounds like a lot of this is very familiar, but maybe there's a couple of points or one point that really stuck out to you as. Maybe not as popular a question. Oh, really? When you go into the poll, it's different? Okay, if you don't see the slide, then you, if you refresh, the question will come up. Do you want to read some of those? Here are some of the answers that are coming up um, for the question. Is there anything that sounds really familiar to you? The huge gap in gender inequality. I don't think we're doing enough regarding this. All of it, from gender representation and leadership to on wiki being horrible, to failure to recognize there's a bias or a problem, just all of it. Lack of notability. Women are not on wiki because they're not notable. Policies being the number one issue, huge struggle. Take a look at the current convo on English Wikipedia with notability. Communicating about concerns and problems it's an invitation for harassment. Toxic reaction to gender equity efforts. Solidarity. I am so happy to hear about a feeling of intersectional allyship. It's hard to edit while publicly identifying as a woman. It's unfortunate, but true. The blockers posed by notability policy on Wikipedia. The fact that it's hard to talk to people about this. It reminds me being at a conference and a man telling me that there is no bias on Wiki because you can't tell usernames gender. The fact that it's hard to talk to people about this. <laughs> All right. All right, so the question, the next question is, what is to you the most important finding of the report? <laughs> Not quite sure what that means.
So here are some of the responses starting to appear up in, uh, for the question, what is to you the most important finding? The need for reform on policy and the continued need for physical face-to-face -face events and convenings. That we are in this together, wiki love to all. The need to have more discussion about how Wikipedia policies are affecting marginalized communities. Being able to highlight the initiatives under inspiring change so that other people can replicate them. We must keep funding this type of research on a regular basis and that Alex, Rosie, and the team doing this are awesome. Off wiki events are extremely important in advancing our work and that our work can't be measured only in number of articles created. Transformational is as important as transactive. The need to evolve policies, especially the notability policy. That is a consciousness about that we have this problem of gender equity. It's pretty clear that we need some type of concentrating staff presence in the movement to bring focus to tactics and conversations in this space. There's one more. How do I get back to this? <laughs> The fact go. that we need to define and enforce somehow strategies to reduce harassment in on off wiki environments. Two things, policies reflect bias and the belief that there is no bias is a problem. We need to fix this issue, but we need not only time to do it, but new metrics to evaluate the impact. If we don't move from evaluating the impact in terms of content, it's gonna be very difficult. All right, so I think some of the highlights I heard here was number one, addressing policy. And I think that for those of us that have been working on this issue, it's become more and more clear over the years that this is probably the, one of the, the number one issue to work on in terms of um, content on the projects. And it's also an incredibly sticky situation on all language projects. But if we're going to be moving towards greater knowledge equity, we have to put our resources and minds together to work on this issue, especially here at the foundation, where I think we, a lot of the times we feel like, oh, we can't do anything about policy because this is, this is um, up to the community. Um, but I think that there are some things that can be done and some initiatives that we can support um, to, to make improvements here. The other one was off wiki events and engaging in person. We do fund a lot of these, but um, there could be more focused, more strategic events um, in the future, as well as um, this idea about measuring impact and how we've measured impact in the past. There's been a lot around content and contributors. But as you notice in the interviews, um, you know, there's a lot of more transformational aspects of this work in terms of community building and community health. And then the last question, I think this is the last question, um, how do you see this report impact or changing the work that you do within Wikimedia?
So here are some of the responses starting to appear for the question, how can you see this report impacting or changing the work you do within Wikimedia? I'll be more inclined to reach out to my international Wiki women friends and involve them in the events in my community better together. Offline activities like workshops are so helpful to get more Wikipedians to contribute, especially the women Wikipedians. I started contributing through an event at my college. Reports do not help us change. They just take a picture of the moment. To change, we need more direct actions and consider all countries and not just a group that's in charge of calling more attention. I hope the report will help more people to take these problems seriously, which would allow my gender equity work to have greater impact. Hoping to create more connections and change the things together, because together we can. I want to encourage other women to host women in the Wikimedia movement conversations in their own language. Identify gender equity strategies that have consensus from some of the gender equity leaders and pursue them together. For example, policy reform, more offline activities. More support for how we can accomplish knowledge equity by 2030. Hoping to create more connections, it's reaffirming my commitment to my work as a qualitative researcher studying bias. Not always do people in the wiki community appreciate data. Okay. Might be easier. <laughs> it's great to have a report that speaks to what is known by women already, but with it, we can start engaging those who are skeptical. In Wikimedia Argentina, we will continue working on defining new metrics to evaluate the impact. Now that the work is mapped, we can reach out to others and do this important work together. It reinforces my need to develop and specialize further in conflict resolution, reduction of gender gap, and policy creation to have a healthier and more equal environment in our movement. Okay. I think that those are all the answers there. Um, hopefully that this is, we do know that a report is, is just a snapshot in time, which kind of was Rosie's um, I don't know, tagline for the whole project. This is just a snapshot in time. Um, we had originally envisioned this interactive map where we can map all the different projects around the world and then you could click and all of that. Um, but that's kind of a bigger deal than we had invested in um, time-wise. But it, we, are do, we are hoping that it, it helps connect movement leaders, but also we're putting together, oh, there's actually one more question. We are putting together a few different variations of the report that, so that people it'll be easier for them to share with the different audiences that they want to share it with, whether it's outside partners or whether it's an infographic that's just a one pager or whether it's something that they want to con help convince uh, Wikimedians in their community that this work is important. So that there's, there's been different requests from the interviewees and other movement leaders for how to share this information. And then the last question, sorry, the other one wasn't the last one. The last question is, what are the one, two, or three next steps you can take in the near future to um, move this work forward?
So here are the responses that are starting to appear for the question, what are one, two, or three next steps you can take in the near future? Repeat this presentation over and over again with new audiences. Connect, engage, act. Convene another Wiki Women Camp to discuss these findings and map some new ways forward. Honestly, in my work, there's virtually nothing. I'm trapped. If by pure chance I hear about someone tackling these issues, I can give moral support. That's pretty much it. Be an ally. Learn about intersectionality on Wiki and across cultures. Keep communicating and keep connecting. It's important not just for some of us, but for all. We need Vizzy Vilzerol, the problem in the media. Avoid fights with other chapters for the power to use the genre and to keep telling us that we do nothing when we are giving everything. Working with Carmen on featuring Eddie, Eddie Tatona on our newsletter, reach out to women's leaders to organize a new conversation series. Facilitate this presentation at another movement event. Make my next 100 Wiki Days round of only women articles. Engage with people unaware or skeptical of the gender imbalance and help develop healthier communities. There's one more, can't find it. <laughs> oh, here. Translate and share the report within our community and Latin America. Present the results. Reach out to our allies in the region. Meet online and offline to discuss and organize how to work together. So this brings up one important point. We have marked the report for translation, but we haven't done a big translation push because we wanted to get feedback from the interviewees which we have done. So um, our next big step is to push the report for translation and even if needed, get it translated um, professionally. And then also with this presentation, now that we have the notes, we've done it a few times, we can also start translating this as well. Because obviously delivering this in your own language is much better and much more better received. Um, I think this brings us to the end of the presentation. If you want to learn more, um, here is the link to the report. I wanted to thank everyone for your participation today, whether you're here in the office or you're on Blue Jeans or you're going to be watching on the YouTube video. There were a lot of people and a lot of effort that went into this report. Obviously, the 65 interviewees who shared their time and their stories with us. Rosie, who did all of the interviewing, as well as the, generated the concept for the whole project and has been spreading the word. Um, Marty, who wrote the bulk of the report and helped with a lot of the analysis. Sati, who's not here, also on our team, helped, as well as Lindsay, who did a lot of the qualitative analysis. So I really wanted to thank them for all their effort. Um, as someone said, there is not anyone on staff who is dedicated to gender equity and diversity issues. So we are doing this because we are passionate about it, but it always, um, you know, our main jobs are grants, so it's always kind of on the side. And I really, really hope that we can put more resources to focus on this issue, both here at the foundation, but also um, around our movement. So thank you. <laughs>